time is like a river made up of the events which happen. And a violent stream. For as soon as a thing has been seen, it is carried away. And another comes in its place. And this will be carried away too. Marker maker, I keep making my mark Spray painting my name and tearing places apart Then getting chased to the park like it's escape from New York Try not to catch a case, but just in case I get caught I tell a cop, fuck you, I mean it straight from the heart Like his purported favorite bird, the Jamaican toady The artist known as Distort is extremely camera shy The descriptions of his person vary greatly Some believe he is a six foot four inch blonde albino with piercing blue eyes. Others say is only four foot eleven, the unfortunate offspring of a Japanese businessman and an Albanian midget who were pressed together on an overcrowded New York subway. And there are even some people who believe that he is an Arapaho shaman who inhabits the body of a beautiful white dog. The one indisputable truth is that women find him all but irresistible. I asked earlier if the dog was a babe magnet and it appears that he is. I happened upon some of his art in two venues in the city of brotherly love and got to talk to some people who know his work well. I went to see Distort's one-man show at the Works on Paper Gallery. So that's the other thing that's pretty compelling, is you have an artist that not only involves himself with the understanding of painting and, and uh, surfaces in painting and the history of painting, but also uh, is taking on sculptural elements and music. So it's sort of a rare breed in my opinion. Hey yo, I'm rancing inside my hands in the skies. I can't decide if I'm a plow I had to stand to the side. Try to avoid the landmines or put my hands in the fire. I feel like sifting through the sands of time to scan it for signs. I pick some plans of mine and then I stop in an instant after I win the grand. He's got a samurai sword here. He's gonna kill himself because the cops are after him. Why are the cops after him? Reckless endangerment, vandalism, and maybe even negligent assault. And where did you get the idea from that? Uh, inspired by real life and uh, told through real life sources that somehow made it into my possession. The kid is from a, a picture of a child with fetal alcohol syndrome from the Czech Republic. The comic book is from the X-Men. The samurai sword is from Japanese graphic novel. Are you into kung fu movies? or uh, Because I do see the samurai. Oh, the samurai sword. It's a symbol of action and, and the various forms you see it in represent various stages of action. Preparation for action, action itself, after the action, and, and commitment. Commitment to action. Commitment is a word that has a lot of meanings. Commitment means, you know, especially with art, you commit to making a piece of art. When you make certain kinds of art, you're committing an act. And if you do it too much, you can get committed to an insane song. <laughs> what about Maneater? What's going on there? A whole lot of stuff. That's a painting about the ladies. Objectifying women. Should that lady have some clothes on, do you think? She said, yeah, video this, video this. I will, but what did you say? What did you say about that one? Boobies. What? Bubby? Boobie. Oh, I know. <laughs> What's with the little girl back down there? No, I really want everybody to have their own interpretation. I give you images, I juxtapose them, they tell a story to me, but they're really seeds of a narrative. These are all images and, and things to look at that have stories beyond our comprehension that you and, and I can't... Uh, we can't know the truth behind them, but we can have an interpretation and a theory as to try to make sense of everything. You know, the same way as we do with life. I do not know what we did to deserve all this suffering. It makes me want to jump from a bridge into the Hudson and swim in the most disgusting water I've ever swam in. With my ankles holding anvils, no sleep, slaughter, or famine. Make way for me to prosper when I conquer the planet.
There is a second venue for Distort's art over on Locust Street between 17th and 18th. But this time, he collaborated with six other artists to create a breathtaking installation. It is astonishing to learn that this entire effort was achieved in one weekend of intense art making. We took three fire extinguishers filled with paint, sprayed them, one orange, one purple, and one green. And after we put up all this white and black beer fontage, we just sprayed it across the whole gallery. And then two people elaborated on the orange, three people elaborated on the purple, and two people elaborated on the green, all simultaneously. So we didn't get in each other's way, because everywhere that we had sprayed orange is where the orange people were working, and all the way around the board. There wasn't too much confusion, and we all have these little motifs that we do, and if you stand here long enough, you can see who's purple, and also if you're familiar with the rest of the team. So that big purple face, I think everybody that's familiar with this work knows that that's Clarence Rich, and you can see it, there's another purple face over there, and everywhere that there's purple, you see these little elements of those squiggles he has, or things like that. Same with the green, so you see the green sculpture that runs through the entire thing, and everywhere there's green is that, and anybody that knows my work knows that that's part of my work. So the longer you're in here, you can sort of start to separate out who did what by the color. I died a thousand deaths, well none of them stick to me. Robin Hood's a thief, cut his hands off. Me against myself in the Mexican stand. Oh, some cracker shit. What's really great is I think people have a hard time even fathoming that it was multiple people that did it, but I think it's a real testament to how well we all work together and the fluidity that we can all move in and out from graffiti to fine art like it's nothing. We know the two extremes and everything in between. It's just a piece of cake working, working together with all of us. We all speak the same languages. I rock the nation till we overthrow the status quo. The superficial has to go. Difference is only natural. We are CB in misery. What's this orange imagery? It's like half bone, half cornstalk. That's graffiti. This is Mr. Mustard, and if he was doing street art, if he thought he had 15 minutes, he would try and do this. This is just a characteristic visual element of graffiti that unfortunately, because it's so often painted over and so persecuted, people don't get to see, and it's one of the points of this exhibit is to show you they did all this in one weekend. You give people a can of spray paint in one week weekend and they'll make something beautiful, but most people can't get over their prejudice long enough to appreciate it outside of a closed building context. This figure with a sculptural mask head, who did that? That's Mr. Mustard as well. I mean, very versatile. To go from that to the collages, but then you can also see those elements of it. You can see that it's almost a collage of objects with paint into it, the same way the collages are a collage of images with paint into it. The process is an organic one, so it shows itself at every step of the way. We just came in here and blasted the paint, and then whoever was green worked off of that, whoever was orange worked off that, and whoever was purple worked off that. It's hard to do something in three colors. These are secondary colors. It's almost like a key signature in music. It helps create like a cohesive mood to things. No matter what you're doing, if you can control color and understand that you can do an entire painting in just greens, and there's so much variation in that, and when you control it, you can get crazier with everything else, with your composition. Color helps order the chaos, no matter what it is you do. If you're doing interior design, if you're doing fashion, color is the organizer. Tell me what I say. 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 Whatever the correspondence is between the input of what you take in every day and then your output. Get in touch with what's that relationship between what you take in and what you put out. I'm influenced by everything. This is the visual language of graffiti. It in and of itself should not offend people. And if it does, it's like, well then you have to come in here and face that or walk by it on the street and suck your teeth at it. What I would like out of this show is for people to appreciate an aesthetic they might not appreciate and maybe when it pops up without them asking for it to pop up not get quite so upset. A lot of people say, well I like the really great graffiti, the stuff that takes time, but I don't like the little scribbles. It's like, well if you prosecute it, all you're going to get is scribbles. So I feel like it's important that the team that I'm with, we come in and try to just show people this is what you could be getting.
Hopefully people like it, some people hate it. Some people come in here and laugh and say, this is an art show, like where's the canvases on the wall? It's like there's art from top to bottom, wall to wall. And to us, this is a maximalist aesthetic of not being content with less. We always want more. Part of the great thing about art history, I think over the last 20 or 30 years, is the aesthetic. I just think about the Gap commercials and the iPods and this really clean look. And I think there's a lot of good things that it's brought about, which is that in the art world, artists have refined whatever their style is into this very clear, concise unit that you can market and you can say, here, this is what I do against the white background, which is good because it helps everybody find their own identity and boil it down to its core elements. But once you have that, blow it up, right? Once we have an aesthetic that's easy to work with, why are we keeping everything clean? Why is that better? I like more to look at. And then you have to find a way to organize it. So when you blow it up, it doesn't get completely too much for people. Don't mind me, I'm a freak half retarded. Drinking water from toilets and digging through bags of garbage. I passed the time up in my room drinking a glass of water, mastermind of things. It's something that you can talk about with words, but you don't need words to explain it. It's all visual communication. We sort of use every tool at our disposal, every moment in art history uh, accumulates towards what we do and there's nothing left out. There's no materials that we refuse to use. Somehow, between the seven of us, it's a cohesive whole. Pretty much where we stand on it is that we'll come in here, spend you know the amount of energy to cover the amount of space that we do just to do it and our it's the background in street art sort of prepares you to lose it all. Beautiful things come and go and it's one of the things that make them beautiful is that here today, gone tomorrow. So what's gonna happen? I got a five gallon bucket of white paint and came over it all. Street painting my name and tearing places apart. They get in, chase to the park like it's escape from New York. Try not to catch a case, but just in case I get caught, I tell a cop, fuck you, I mean it's straight from the heart.